Hmm, I wonder what this is. Okay, interesting. Um, you can have it. Oh, never mind. Ew! It's disgusting! Is that what I think it is? Nah, I hate that. Put that back. Put the lid back on. Mm, I don't like this one. What, what is, is that? that? Yeah, better close it. Oh my god, it's what we wanted! <laughs> Coming up on this week's episode of Aftershock. Miley shows us how one of the clubs at Cyprus celebrates the holidays. Ivan investigates where mall Santas come from. Brady covers the band's annual winter concert. And much, much more. What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Samantha Duarte. And I'm Andrew Dunham, and this special holiday edition of Aftershock starts now. With so many clubs at Cypress Bay, each one celebrates the holidays in their own way. Molly looks into how JSU gives back during this special time of year. This holiday season, many have shown their love for their special tradition. <laughs> but a certain community lights a candle to shine their unique culture. We're hosting a Hanukkah event to celebrate the eight days of Hanukkah, which is an important holiday in Jewish culture. It goes back 2200 years to when uh, the land of Israel was occupied by the Greeks and the Syrians. During that occupation, they destroyed the temple and they outlawed the Jewish religion. The Jews formed a rebellion, the Maccabean Rebellion, and they managed to drive the Syrians out. At that point, they wanted to rededicate the temple. So they rebuilt the altar and they lit the menorah, which is the eight candles, but most of the oil had been, was no longer usable. There was just a small amount. So they tried it. They figured they'd have one night at least, but it burned for eight nights and it was considered a bit of a miracle. Hanukkah is a day of the lights to shine lights on, on important issues. And us lighting candles each night, saying the prayer, the two prayers, it's shining a light for those who are kept hostage in Hamas and those who are suffering every day. But this didn't stop JSU from wanting to make an impact. Yeah, I mean, at first it was really stressful because everything happened so fast. Everyone was trying to do a drive. Everyone was just rushing. So we got a couple from SGA to help. A couple of my friends, a couple of my cousins, um, they reached out to some people at the school who were in Israel at the time to figure out where we could send it from who, and we figured out we could send it from Chabad in Aventura who sends supplies on the regular. The world is so, so shattered right now. We need to unify. We need that idea of globalization. We can't stop just talking about it. We actually have to start practicing it and implementing it. And it has to start with small things. This is a small thing, but you know, part of learning about other cultures is overcoming fear of them. And one way of overcoming fear or ignorance of them is through education. This year, it's extra important to me because I did spend a great deal of time in Israel this summer and it, uh, I touched the Western Wall, you know, and when you do that, it changes you. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. I'll look, there's, there's something about being there and, and touching those places and being uh, in a land as ancient where your people have tread for thousands and thousands of years. In a funny sort of way, it's almost like being home. This holiday season, make sure to spread love all around. I'm Mario Ojeda, CB TV.
What? Okay, I'm on my way. You will not believe who I was just on the phone with. Who? Santa. He's at Sawgrass Mall. You can finish the tosses. I gotta go. What, Andrew? You can't... Here's Ivan to talk about the reality of Mall Santas. Hello there. Say, have you ever wondered why this is a thing? Mall Santas may seem normal at first glance, but when you really think about it, why do they even exist in the first place? Well, that's what I'm here for. So follow me while we uncover this odd tradition. In 1890, a guy named James Edgar was thinking about ways to bring customers into his dry goods store. Then suddenly, an idea struck him. What if he dressed up as Santa Claus? Decorations of Old Saint Nick already existed decades ago as a way to bring in customers, but having Santa Claus himself hasn't been done before. So, he went to Boston to have a suit tailored for him, then brought it back to Brockton to greet his customers, starting the tradition of mall Santas. Hoo, hoo, hoo. That sounds jolly. But remember, that is just Santa himself. The activity of taking pictures with him doesn't start until a few decades later. In 1943, a man by the name of Arthur French was sitting in his office while he noticed a line full of kids waiting to meet Santa Claus. The following year, he decided to leave the newspaper store he worked at and decided to become a photographer for the store next door. There, he took pictures of children alongside Mr. Claus and sold them to parents as souvenirs. He was so successful that he tried it again next year earning $10,000, equivalent to $169,000 in today's currency. And there you have it, a modern tradition built on someone's own public image in order to attract attention to their own stores. Well, I'm Aaron Rosek, CVTV. See you next time. All I want for Christmas. Since when are you a singer? My whole life? Maybe I should have joined the band in freshman year. Maybe it's best if you just watch from the audience. Lucky for you, Brady's here to tell us about the winter concert. Hi, I'm Isabella de Oliveira. This is our yearly winter concert where we like sing a bunch of holiday songs, Christmas and Hanukkah, and we combine it with the band. Something that's different about this from the rest of our concerts is the music we choose. All of the music is holiday based, um, whether that's Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever holiday you celebrate. We try to be inclusive and represent all holidays for the season. What I think brings people to the concert is just a variety of different things we have, the different classes, different performances, different things just put on by the different students and I just think that really just leads people to want to go into the concert. My favorite part about the concert was just uh, going up there, just playing with my friends. You can just get up there, just really enjoy something that you love, just to play in front of everybody. It's just a very unique experience. I think we had a really good showing at the concert this year, and I know everyone who came to the show really enjoyed it. The hard work that Chorus and the band put into the show really pays off, and having my friends and family always there supporting me on my shows is the best part. It's an experience that I wouldn't trade for anything else. And hopefully next year when I go off to college, the band and chorus members have the same experience as I did with our winter concert and every concert we do after that. On Tuesday, December 2nd, the Cypress Bay's boys varsity soccer team faced Stoneman Douglas High School at home. The game started off strong for the Lightning team with a strong defense and offense. 
However, the Stoneman Douglas' defense and goalie put up a strong fight. The team's cohesive ball movement helped advance them into finally scoring the game's first goal. The game went on as the Stoneman Douglas' boys' team grew closer to the Lightning goal, but the Lightning's team struck them out of the field. The first half ended with a score of 1-0. As day turned to night, the Lightning did not give up the fight. It wasn't long until a penalty for Stoneman Douglas was granted, which resulted in a goal. Both teams put up a fight, but ultimately, Cyprus in the last two minutes managed to score their game-winning goal, leaving Cyprus for yet again another win. I'm Mariana Sanin, CB TV. What a day for some football, baby! Every year, players across the league have the opportunity to share the off-field causes that matter most to them during My Cause, My Cleats. The league's My Cause, My Cleats initiative launched in 2016. It aims to celebrate the positive impact players can make in communities by highlighting relevant issues. To bring their designs to life and showcase their causes in a unique way, players collaborate with cleat manufacturers and designers each season to create these custom-designed cleats. What gives me the fuel to want to help is my mom, who is blind from a domestic violence situation, and her drive that she has every day. NFL wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins is using his platform to support Smooth a nonprofit connecting domestic violence survivors to resources and financial assistance. Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey is supporting his own personal foundation. He works hard to empower disadvantaged youth to achieve success by providing resources and support to their communities and cultivating their talent in the areas of education, business, athletics, and the arts. And I'm lacing my cleats up for 87 and running. My foundation works with underserved communities, uh, both where I'm from and in the Kansas City area. So we Fellow Chiefs All-Pro Patrick Mahomes supports his own foundation as well. 15 in the Mahomes is dedicated to improving the lives of children, the foundation supports initiatives that focus on health, wellness, communities in need of resources, and other charitable causes. Here are the links for all three of their causes and foundations. Check the websites for more information. Hi, my name is Kara. Hi, I'm Blake. Hi, I'm Keith Nefsky. Hey, I'm Sammy Rosenzweig, and I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew. I'm Jewish. So on Christmas Day, you wake your parents up super early at like 4 a.m. Kids like get out of their bed and they're like, oh my god, it's Christmas. They all wake up at 5 a.m., all the kids, in their matching pajamas. And then their parents are like, actually, like you have to wait. You just open a bunch of gifts and then you're supposed to go to church or something. But I don't, I've never seen anyone actually do that. And then they open their presents and they're showered with like thousands and thousands and thousands of presents. Have your dad throw away all the trash. They all line up in high order and take their photos like this. Just count down the days till the next year. Oh, it's 364 days until Christmas again. So Santa is basically like a really old and fat guy. So Santa, he works year round to make all of our presents. Is in charge of all the reindeer, all the elves, and delivers Christmas presents all night on Christmas Eve to the entire world and every child. He's kind of fat, and he wears like his red coat, and like he has that like beard thing, which I don't understand Santa. Like how could he get to every house in one night? Santa is like this big, really, really fat guy, and he wears one of these. I know that. And like, I kind of feel like he's like bald under that like hat, no? I don't know. He seems sketchy. Santa has Ten reindeer, eight reindeers. <laughs> Do you know Dasher and Dancer and Blanson and Blitzen? Eight, because wait, there's Comet and Cupid. Wait, how much is that? Santa has, I think, ten reindeer. Do you know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen and Comet and Cupid? Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Comet, Cupid. Like Twinkle or something?
Prancer. And... Nah, I think that's all I know. Now we all know the best part of every winter holiday is the presents that we get. But what are the worst presents? Well, I'm here at the bay to find out. What's the worst Christmas gift you can get? Probably coal. Uh, socks. Socks? Yeah. That's the worst thing you can think of. I mean, yeah. Yeah? Or maybe like, I don't know, a dead animal. A dead animal? Yeah. Got a dead animal? No. No, I have. Actually? Yeah, it was a raccoon. Yeah, it fleas. Yeah, that's sad. That, it was sad. Yeah. He came back to life though, weirdly. Like, he, he like jumped back. Oh wow. Worst Christmas gift. Um, probably a girlfriend. That's the worst gift? Yeah, probably a girl girlfriend suck. Why? It's a bad gift. Like, it's too much responsibility. I'm too young for that. I'm 16 years of age, I don't need to have a girlfriend. Do you have a girlfriend? No. What's the worst gift you could get? Socks. Nothing, you can't think of anything worse than socks. Nothing, can't think of anything worse than socks. I've got it, socks. Like underwear. Really? That's the worst thing you can get. What about like... What if you get stabbed for Christmas? Wouldn't that be worse if you get stabbed for Christmas? Stabbed? Just stabbed? Yes. Wouldn't that be a worse gift? Yeah. No? <laughs> that's nah, that's pretty brave. It's the worst Christmas gift you've got. Cole. Cole? Cole. Um, a pencil. Uh, a pencil. A pencil? Cole. Cole. I received Cole for Christmas. What's the worst Christmas gift? I'm Jewish. Mm. That's all for this special holiday edition of Aftershock. If you want to watch previous episodes, check out our YouTube at Cypress Bay CBTV and follow all of our social medias. I'm Samantha Duarte. And I'm Andrew Dunham. Happy holidays.